Yeah, thanks everyone. It's absolutely ecstatic to be here. Um, there's been some phenomenal talks, so trying to follow them up is a little stressful, but uh, let's do this. So today's topic is de de DevOps and data science, what works and what doesn't. Um, so just a little bit about what Aripto does. Um, we're really involved in the Kubeflow community. We've been contributing since you know, 0.4, doing a lot of release management, lead multiple Kubeflow working groups, and then internally, we um, also have products around Kubeflow and Kubeflow as a service, so helping just people um, get more out of their platforms with open source tooling such as Kubeflow. Um, the intro was really great. So uh, I'm Chase Christensen. I'm a solutions architect at Aricto. Really my job is to you know, work with MLEs as well as platform engineers and data scientists and, and kind of listen to their pain points, understand how we can help them with open source tools and, and get them the outcomes they want. Been through all the super, the, the uh, Kubernetes certification, which means I know just enough to know that I know nothing about Kubernetes, right? As you start to dive into those, you learn about just the ocean of Kubernetes knowledge there is out there. And I'm really, really excited and spiritually aligned with this kind of trend of platform engineering, which is, you know, kind of DevOps with a purpose or with an outcome of, of building a platform and really helping people get the best, most out of their work. Let's see if I want to... So, yeah, I've been a uh, software engineer for quite a few years and I've recently moved to a more product-oriented role. So I'm driving some MLOps initiatives and some of our uh, open source strategies. So I'm, I'm really aligned with the needs and uh, of our you know, end users being data scientists or ML engineers and having been on the software engineering side and can also understand and you know, engage into more solutioning and architecture discussion. So it's real fun. So let's quick, that's just for fun, take a quick poll here. Who here would align with being a data scientist? Do we have any data scientists in the audience? Okay, there's a few. ML engineers, I know, and I know these definitions are kind of fluffy. Okay. Data engineers. Am I missing one? Straight developers. Okay. Is anyone none of the above? Okay. Is anyone all of the above? No, there's a few here that are like reluctantly admitting it and they look really tired. Those are the ones drinking the most coffee. So, totally understand. MLOps is not DevOps, and uh, we kind of learned this the hard way, and uh, we actually see this with a lot of end users, and we think it's because the wires got crossed. You know, the last year we've been hearing about MLOps and saying, you know, not a couple years, right? MLOps is about automating and testing your deployments of your software, a model, right? A model is just some application you can serve. Data scientists out there training them, you know, they're doing wizard math on the board, they're figuring it out for you, they're getting these data sets with the hard work of data engineers, and then you just want to iterate faster, right? We've got this idea of, hey, if we iterate faster, our models will be great. And then we say, well, listen, we know about something that helps us iterate really quickly, right? DevOps. And of course, we know DevOps is different hand wavy based on your organization. But this concept of, hey, if we collaborate better, if we understand and be mission oriented, we can drive better outcomes. So hey, high velocity, we both align with this, models or applications, so let's just start doing DevOps. And it's not our fault, right? When we do things with MLOps through a DevOps lens, we start to make these assumptions that may not always be true, right? Data scientists should write their own code. Data scientists should promote their own models, right? They might be make a model, push to prod, they're good, you know, we throw a party, their model's perfect, they buy all the right houses. Um, and then data scientists should package their own work via CICD, right? We are starting to say data scientists, we know that you work really hard understanding data sets and math, and now we're gonna teach you Git, and we're gonna teach you Git, and you're gonna like it. And sometimes that can be really difficult, right? And as you may have seen in person, these, uh, these uh, assumptions don't really work for data scientists, right? Their work could take months and weeks and years, not days, right? If, if, if something goes wrong with a model or a new project is being presented, looking at a data scientist and say, all right, you've got this assumption, you've got this hypothesis, give me a prototype by next Tuesday. They're gonna freak out, right? They're gonna be like, what are you talking about? I don't even know if I can get the data, right? There's a lot of work they need to do. Their, require, their models and how they do their work requires a lot of experimentation, right? Domain knowledge and many, many, many iterations. Their models are not the full application. A lot of times they're maybe serving a model or building into a model an application that's then using that logic to present some sort of business outcome. And many of these problems aren't just about serving the model, right? Just because you've served a model and you can iterate on the model doesn't mean that was the problem. In fact, a lot of the talks today we've heard about Listen, there's this new idea of maybe it's the data. Maybe we need to be better about our data hygiene, understanding how to source our data, because the model could be you know, an open source model or whatever, and it is doing our job. It's just your understanding of the domain or whatever is causing quality to, to fall. 
And this is the outcome, right? We're saying you need to understand our square DevOps, and then they're a circle, and you're trying to ram it through, and it causes a lot of tension. And here's the real problem that we're trying to solve. Data scientists need to pull data. They need to train models. They need to validate models, and they need to collaborate on model development, right? They're not just, they're, they're not the entire story, right? They want better ingredients. They want better models. Data scientists also want to use common tooling and platforms to simplify this handoff process. They want to give to the organization the work they've done, but they don't necessarily want to run these models, right? They do not want to be in charge of, you know, being paged in the middle of the night because an inference service went down, right? That's not, they just want the model to be built and they want to know about the quality of the model, which is kind of a different way of reporting things, right? And if we drill even deeper, they want this process to be simple and they want to trust it without context switching, which is really hard because they just put on all these months, weeks, years to do these, this work with this model and they want to trust that if they push this process that you as an ML engineer or a data engineer have given them, that their model is then going to be put into production in a way that provides value for their business, for their boss, for owners or whatever to align with their goals. And it has to be reliable and trusted. Because data scientists is more than just models, right? Data science is way more than just models. And sometimes we're only just a small piece of the puzzle here, right? The implementation details and the tooling has all this background of, hey, can we even solve this problem with data? Do we have the, you know, the right design and order? Is there an investment decision? And then, hey, can we even do this, right? And then, of course, the iteration of did we actually do it? So we had some users come up to us and they said, listen, we want to start to use these DevOps workflows. And we said, well, you know what? If we build this, if we build this amazing platform, this amazing tool set with all these cool open source tools that we've been hearing about at KubeCon for all these years, it's going to be great. And the data scientists are going to love us, and they're going to put us on their shoulders and parade us around town. So this is what we tried to build. So we know data scientists like Kubeflow, right? They like Kubeflow. They like to be able to build pipelines. They like to use continuous integration. You can shift left into the data scientist world. They can do all sorts of cool things. We can get all sorts of little great artifacts that we can check into Kubernetes. We also know that they like Jupyter Notebooks, right? Which is why we start to look at Kubeflow, because they can start to orchestrate things with Jupyter Notebooks. And we think, hey, if we have Jupyter Notebooks, if we have Kubeflow, and we have something else to, to manage and schedule our compute, we can help data scientists do their own build pipelines. Which is why you use Kubernetes, right? You need a way to intelligently schedule things. Once you have these pipelines, you need to be able to create these jobs and move them wherever. And you want the, the data scientists to be self-service. And then you have to find a way to serve the model, right? Once you have this model artifact, you find a way to serve this model. And you know, this is a whole other decision and they don't really want to dive too much into this. They just want their model to be served. So we give them Kanico, right? We give them a Docker file. We say, here's your Docker file. Here's Kanico. Kanico's great. It's rootless. It can run in the Kubeflow pipeline. Just build things and go, right? Um, and then we use Argo for Argo, for Argo workflows. Argo just for delivery, because you can just update a manifest, you can deploy things, you can move it across environments. But there's a lot of little decisions in here that we had made for the data scientists, we asked the data scientists to decide, right? How are you gonna tag your latest model, right? What does latest mean? How do we version that? And then how do we bring you on board with this? And it worked, kind of, right? And I think we've all been in this situation where we built something really great, and you know, hey, I've gotten successful container builds, you know, I've done a sample like GBM model and served it with a container. What's wrong with you? But really, we have just created all sorts of cognitive load and complexity, giving them a promise that, hey, we're just giving you a platform. Hey, we're just giving you a build process. So where did we go wrong? What we went wrong is actually the first, or our first reaction of data scientists doing this. This was not bad. This was actually the best thing that could have happened to us, right? The data scientists looking at us and saying, what you built does not work for me probably saved us, because we want this to be able to scale beyond us. We want to scale to all sorts of orgs doing ML ops, right? So the fact that we gave them this over complex workflow and they pushed back was actually really healthy for us. Because what we heard, what we heard is, listen, the way we design the systems and the way we have the interfaces within the system is actually designing the tension and the ways that we collaborate within each other and with our organization, right? This is like a loose interpretation of Conway's law, right? How we design our system and organize around our, ourselves around it is how the, the interactions that we're promoting, the incentive to have these interactions within ourselves. Our systems need to be flexible and transparent for us, right? They can't be over complex. MLEs, SROEs, platform teams, they need to understand how these services are provided and they need to be simple to work with. 
And it also needs to be flexible and lean and transparent, right? If someone wants to run a new type of workload, it shouldn't be a nightmare for them to do it, and we should be able to be pluggable and let them do it. We also learned that we need to listen to our data scientists way more, right? When you're developing things in a vacuum and, and trying to build a platform and, and not bringing in your data scientists, you can run into a trouble, and your first prototype might be, you know, kind of what we had, which was the dumpster fire. But that's not to say that there isn't a place for DevOps in data science, right? Because as you just heard, we learned a lot of lessons. We learned that, hey, we built some tools, right, which took DevOps processes, right, Argo, all these cool things, had really smart people using DevOps processes or enabling DevOps processes to make services, to build really interesting solutions to help data scientists do what they want to do in an easier way. We're actually helping them with their cognitive load and we can really respond to this quickly. We can take a lot of different attempts, we can make some wrong assumptions, and we can continuously improve using these kind of DevOps processes that we learn, and that's how we work together to build a platform. And we've done this, we've built some really great tools um, that have actually helped use these DevOps developer skill sets we have to help data scientists use their skill sets best, and uh, Stefano's gonna dive into that. Okay, great, lots of energy. Thank lots you. of energy. <laughs> Instead of 
And then she'll give you a line for you. Where are you hoping to build all of that other stuff? No. You have to reuse common tooling that was built by the community and by very smart people who took the time and effort to think this through and build it better than the demo server. But this is enough, right? So surface up to the end user because you have to take them into consideration and you start giving your model to surface, right? So let's take a couple of examples. Say storing a model and publishing publishing it to a uh, knowledge store. Well you need to start thinking about how you analyze the model, how it's packaging so that you are sure that the case of runtime is that you have stopped from the support, you know, start from Apple. And then provide a bunch of uh, high-level APIs and abstract all of that away, right? Easy enough. So now you reach the data scientists where they are. So you're giving them a very easy-to-use API and they don't have to think about all of this complexity. Another example, yeah. A PC model is just for six, seven lines of YAML. You can even translate this to maybe seven lines of ISO code. But then, um, Assuming that one single API, API that takes into account all of these configurations, tokens, and pulls them from an object store based on multiple platform providers and support. So we went through the examples and built a tool that fits them um, in their environment and with the tools they, they like to use. So going back to the framework, analog is not simply about this DevOps principles to machine learning. This is more about building applications and services that are tailored to the audience, whether they can think of a single family data engineer to do anything like that. And so we've done, so again, this is these, these, these APIs and uh, these packages, these tools that don't want to be something that proposed as this truth or you know the way to go. It's more about um, discussing the philosophy that is behind making the right decisions, thinking about who you are actually going to pay attention to here, and then what they need and how they need to operate. So we think that we can easily deploy models at Arctica and that's
data science that they point out um, is, 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 is very much broader than just the idea of data modeling and, and designing. We have to take into account numerous other factors like reputability, reproducibility, and, and how you eventually do project design. But then this is not the time to try to do those things yet. We just want to call out. Thank you. 